Right, so that's the first section done. We have our frame put together, just a cross frame and our two hubs now welded on and good and solid. I'm after giving it a hell of a good clean down there as well because this steel has been sitting outside for a wee while and it has got a lot of surface rust on it. So it's all cleaned up there now. So first thing I have to do is reinforce this joint here on both sides and then we get cracking on building our frame. They'll just sit in there like that and just weld them right in the center. I'll give it a nice bit of strength just in that joint. So because I'm building this with random bits of steel, um, this is the angle iron I'm going to use here to make our frame. Only the pieces I have are all too short, so I'm going to have to lengthen them by welding two together, which is easy enough done. Um, it'd be great if it had been all the one length, but look at that's what we have, that's what we're going to use. We'll get a spirit lever, we run along to make sure it's square first, and then we weld this in place, and then we'll cut it at about four feet, is all we're going to want. So let's do that. So now we have our lengths, the length we want them, which are four feet a piece. That's the way I'm building this one. It's just to kind of suit the tank that I have or a tank that I possibly might get in the future, a slightly bigger one. Four foot is plenty for me. You build it to suit whatever you have. So my tank is 38 inches wide. So I'm gonna leave it with a little bit of extra room to spare in case again, we get a bigger tank in the future. So now we have to finish off doing our frame. We have to add our two pieces and both ends. To do this, we need to make a, a 90 degree bend. Now, angle iron is quite easy to join. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can cut both pieces that you join together, 45 degree angle, slide them together, you get a lovely easy joint. But then there's another way that I like to actually do it, and to me it's a stronger joint. I'll just show you how that's done now, it's actually quite easy. So a couple of ways to do it easily would be to measure from here to here, and then measure that same distance in here. And then all you have to do is cut that piece out, just there where it sits, and then slide your other piece up against it. Or if you have a piece of the other side on your hand, this is a small bit of an off cut, just sit that over it like that and mark it. And there you have it. You got a perfect piece there. And then you just come along here on this side and cut it with your saw so you're not cutting into this. So you're just taking that face side there off. And there you have it, you have a lovely clean joint. So I spent ages there looking for my safety glasses and I found them right here. Right, so it's a new day and in the background, now that you've seen it before, we don't have to hide it anymore. I'm working on that at night um, and I have a few bits and pieces that are coming for it very shortly. So that'll get us working on that. I'm not sure what way you see the videos, whether you see that one first or this one first. But we'll see how it comes together. I think the next thing we should do is throw a set of wheels in it, have it up on a set of axle stands here at the minute. And at least when I get the wheels on, I can kind of work out where I want to uh, fit the boom, which is the most important thing. I want to kind of get that in the right spot that is clear of the back wheels is not going to hit the tires when it goes down and I do want to put a set of mud guards on it as well eventually so I want to leave room for them too so let's get the wheels in it right well, another little thing I did do off camera was I fitted two bits of angle iron underneath it, just for extra strength. Um, that'll make a big difference there. It just gives that the extra bit of strength that it badly needs. And that is solid, that's gonna go nowhere. So 
So that's that sealed. I don't stop any water going down to that and rusting it from the inside out. Ready to mount our hitch. Uh, bolts, bolts. Let me see. A little bit late. Long. There's an old bolt here. Might do the job nicely. That looks better. And she's starting to look more like something. Right, so this is our boom. So you would have seen this in other videos on the back of our quad. Uh, have this good few years now. Um, but the only thing about it is, on the last Honda quad that I had, I had a special couple of brackets welded. Actually two plates welded with holes in them for these to fit on just onto the rack nice and easy. I don't have that on the new quad and I don't fancy welding stuff to the new quad either to be honest so but you can buy a bracket for this you don't have to do that it came with this as an option I don't know why for the price of this why it didn't come with it because it really did need it but it didn't and it was about 150 200 euros for a little simple bracket madness so that's why I never got it and that's why this was kind of always in my head It'd be much better job anyway so let's see what we can do So what we're doing here now is we have our two things for holding on our spray boom. I just used the two original ones. So they work well on the quad, they never bent. So hopefully we get the same result here. But here at the minute, I'm actually extending them ever so slightly. I cut the pieces off. They were too long here on the inside bracket and welded the whole thing together rather than bolt it. I was gonna bolt it originally, but I think it's better welded. I'm gonna use the pieces that I took off. I have grinded them down into a nice bevel there. I can get a, a good weld into them. And hopefully, just with the extra wee bit of height, it might seem small, but that gets it a wee bit further off the ground. It's on. We'll pick this up when it allows me to go back outside again. And just on the button. Here's my pal coming now. Where's Hudson? Hudson! And he's never too far behind either. Well, that shower is just about over there. And I'd rather it didn't rain on it because I have most of that wire brushed down for paint. And you know what's going to happen now, it's going to rust instantly, so. But that is just the summer we're having. Well, near autumn, don't say that Adrian. Anyway, here we are, there's our boom on. Fits nicely. Seems to sit well, I can adjust it up and down. And I think it needs to be risen that side, it does. So there's a sprayer sitting on and that's it connected up so this here will turn our boom um, on and off that little valve there and when it's closed we we'll use our lance instead so just looking at it there it sits lovely and one thing i will do is turn that clock this and that way so i can see exactly what the pressure is on it i wasn't sure whether i should put the tank long ways i've seen that in other trailers that people have made but i'm happy now i put it that way at least then the pipes when they come out they're going straight into what you want it for rather than having to come out and then torn 90 degrees going to the boom or going to the front of the quad if you get me there's no kinks on the pipes so we have our two hooks here the idea of this is that will sit there like that and never move one on the far side two in the very bottom as well so we can just hook it in like that that way it can never come off easy done another wee thing i just root that here is i want to make something just to keep it off the ground when it's sitting now I have the hitch rubbing the ground because that's going to wear it and I'm going to damage it over time so I have this little bit of box iron put on at a kind of an angle so it sits level so I'm just making a wee shoe here for the bottom of it A lot of hours have passed and we have quite a bit of other stuff welded onto it but I'll go through all that uh, shortly well it'll be a long time for me but it'll be shortly for you but now I'm going to give it a quick wipe down with some white spurs to take all the grease and stuff off it. I have already sanded it down and I have 
grind it down all the while. There's any bits of sticking up that might catch your hand just to keep everything nice and smooth. Right, this is what we're using. I'm covering up the brand name because it doesn't matter what brand you get. But this is a rust inhibiting primer. So it's gonna be good on this. It is clean, but there is old steel there and there is wee bits of fragments of rust. So this here should make it all good. Right, so it's a new day, we're back at it again. We had quite a lot of rain last night and this morning, so I couldn't really get at this again to get finishing it. But we have it painted. Hudson's just given his bit of approval. B couldn't care less. We had a couple of options to paint it. I had black in a rattle can and paintbrush, and then we had also got for the Ferguson grey. Now, I will admit, we had two other colours, which was green and other I think was yellow, but yeah, I don't know why anyone would want to use those colours, so it was either red or grey, two good decent colours, so we went with the Ferguson grey at the end of it all, and I think it looks a bit better. Next thing we have to do, and don't worry, I'm going to go through the three jobs this trailer now can do, hopefully, and do sort of middle and well, but the first thing I want to do is put some sort of a floor in it. Now, I really do want to put a check plate floor into it, or a steel floor, and put rubber on top of that, because I do have some of this stuff that's sitting down here. This is conveyor belt. And I'm not sure why I got that. I think I got it when I was doing the hedge cutter to make a flap on the front of the hedge cutter. And I have some of it left over down there on the shed, so I'm going to reuse that. But I'm not putting the steel floor in today. I don't have any steel got. I do have some plywood, which I know plywood wouldn't be perfect, but you know what? You don't get the vibration in plywood that you get with steel. If that's a steel floor, the rubber will help, but with a steel floor, it will be very, very hard. So let's throw the floor into it. Let's get the thing finished, get the hitch put back on it, and then we'll show you what exactly it's for. That's our timber floor in. Now, next thing I need to do is this is what I'm talking about. Although you see I've used quite a lot of it. This actual piece here was, you can see the kind of the markings of it. It's sort on top of the rack on the back of the quad and then the sprayer sat on top of that. So it give a bit of cushion to it and it stopped the sprayer from getting vibrated and cracking, which was great. It worked brilliantly. It stopped the sprayer from moving around because this stuff, it is very good for lots of different things. So we have our play on the knees and we have our conveyor belt. It's horrible out of stuff the minute you touch it. Yeah, it's like that, but the weather will take that out of it once it rains a bit on it, which it will. In this country, you'll have no problem with that. So, we're finished. It's all wired now, it's the following day actually, and everything's wired in, it didn't take very long to wire it in. Um, so we just connected on a new piece of wire here, which lengthened it down and brought it around the side here. And we have a little toggle switch, we can turn it on and off. Another thing I put on here was a three pin plug. These quads, Hondas, doesn't matter what brand it is you actually buy, very few of them, if any of them, ever think of putting the three pin plug here. They always put a 12 bolt outlet here and sometimes on the Hondas you'll get them up here. But none of them actually think of putting one at the back, which I can understand. Personally, I think they should come standard with definitely at least one, maybe one here or one underneath at the bottom. So you can plug in something that's been powered in the back of it. It just sounds like it should be on every single quad. Another thing which would be great is to have them pre-wired that you can plug in trailer lights into them as well. I also think they should come standard with indicators, regardless if they're using the road or not. I think they should all come with indicators fitted as standard. It's not a big thing to do, and I don't understand really the reason behind not having it in it. So I just wired in this by here myself. It's waterproof, so you can just flip it up, hook in whatever you want to use. 
and that's it it's in and it's working shocking handy that just to have for anything you've got to hook onto the back of it now you get a look at what we were trying to plan in our heads to do the sprayer is all mounted up i'm not taking it out today because if you look behind me you see i don't know if the camera picks it up or not but everything's just fierce mucky at the moment it has rained quite a bit last night again so i'm going to wait until the time is right and we will get it out and we will get spraying with it another thing i don't want to do is take it out too soon because this paint although touch it feels dry if you held onto it for a while your hand would stick to it it's not hardened yet and that can take two to three weeks for that to harden so there's no point in destroying it and cow dung and stuff until the paint has dried properly so i welded this frame up on the front the idea of this frame i just made it simply out of an old gate an old door actually they came off our old buyer milk and buyer it's all right it done the job um so i welded these two hooks here on the side of it and that is for just rolling the pipe on for your lance i also put this lad here and upright weld it straight down so you can just pull your lance up and drop it down when you're not using it, and that just keeps it out of the way these guys here on the back of the tank you can use them but yeah always when you wrap the pipe around i find that it comes loose constantly and if it comes loose on this and gets wrapped around a wheel or something you'll end up breaking something so i just thought that there was simple done and better so we have a little switch here let's hook on that's it building up pressure let me just turn on our valve i should spray come on there you go if you can see that there she is spraying there away when you're on the quad hit the toggle switch and it turns off straight away there's a very strong wind at the minute that's blowing it straight back and that is pure water by the way there's no chemical in it at the minute but there's a strong wind blowing it back this way but when that is okay and we're driving forward it's fine it does clear the trailer in case any of you want to know it does clear the trailer and if i found that it wasn't well all i'd do is simply take these bodies back off again and move them out pick them out a few inches but for now i think it's spraying nicely so you might ask what this is for well this is to put your lance through it just fits through there no more and that way then when you're using your lance which i spray from this side here because the throttle is on the far side it comes through here and that stops it from falling down the side getting caught in a wheel and also the same with this here a little handy little thing they're like a little mini ratchet and they're shocking handy for tying stuff down and just put that around that and it'll keep that there and it'll keep it away from the wheel and then it's just sitting there just ready to be used and it keeps it away from the wheel so that's the reason i put that there the thing was two door latches actually welded together to make one but there are other things i want to use this for when it's not spraying and let's show you what they are so to show this next one right we would be taking the boom off i'm not going to take it off today you can kind of visualize what i'm talking about without me taking it off because the next job i want to do with it is actually spray but you can see these three holes in the floor so there's a reason for that when i bought my malone post driver it came with two uh, attachments that you can put onto onto the side of it one for sheep wire and one for barbed wire now i never really used them and um, the sheep wire probably would be the handiest one the barbed wire attachment was a wee bit loose when i was using it and it wasn't that awful day in about it and i never really used it but you would often see me out in the fields using a handle of a brush or something and holding the barbed wire and walking back down the field when i'm laying out the wire before i put in a new fence that's all right that's the way i've done it a long time but it can be so on the back holding it out from yourself just that awkward angle so a lot of people had said why don't you make a wire reeler or something you could drive along and just reel the wire out so it used to come with a heavy bit of box iron welded across here and then welded down like this and then what you do is you just drop it into the post malone i was going to call it post malone the malone post driver and that was it done it was a heavier contraption and it had that habit of moving around from side to side and i never used it and you wouldn't have the tractor with you that often when you would be putting up barbed wire normally i'd drive the post and then come back a day or two later on the quad with all the fence and bits and pieces and put on the wire that's just the way i was doing it so i cut that bracket off well these lads which were an old oh an old bit of a topper i think it was and good thick bits of steel there now there's nothing later but them and now this will sit into the floor of our trailer and all you have to do then is drop your barbed wire in there and just drive along and roll your barbed wire out behind the quad another thing i will do is get a little jenny for it i'll probably just buy one because they're not that overly expensive um it wouldn't be worth my while 
train to route have one train to make one so and then adapt it that it can slot into that hole as well and you can just toggle from one to the other so the next little job that i wanted for which could be the handiest of the whole lot and it kind of came to me as i was building it so that's the reason why i built it the width that i did as well as holding the sprayer it'll also hold this by here now this guy i got a while back um do you remember our tipsy bins michael megafab i seen he was selling these a while back and i got one for myself he had three different sizes i think this was the larger one i don't know if he still has them or not you'll have to check that out for yourself but i thought this would be a great job when you had power tools and stuff with you and you didn't want them getting wet or to put in the back you often see the american people in pickups there they'll put a toolbox right in the back of the pickup so you can throw your stuff into it you don't have to take it out right away and just leave them as they are especially when we're back and forth on the other farm working on a little cottage as well it has already come in extremely handy in lots of little jobs that have been using it but one thing i didn't realize when i got it was it fits lovely on the back of a quad but it's not something for me i would keep on the quad the whole time because when you'd fill this full it'd be fairly heavy on the back of a quad i was still favoring the one that i have it's hard to beat it although half the time it's full of muck and dirt and water it still is very handy and just by the way in case any of you wonder a lot of farmers will use these or any kind of peg yes peg fits into them this is what it'll be most handy for now you have to imagine the boom is not there and how easy that would be to bring to the other farm or anywhere you're going all your power tools is there and it's not going to get wet you can leave it out in the rain what i did do as well underneath as well the two of these lads one here one on the far side so you can go underneath with a bungee strap through there through there and underneath that axle and that's it it's tied down it may not be for everybody but i'm just talking for myself i think that would be shocking handy for bringing stuff back and forth and you don't have to bring the jeep over every single time because the quad is just so fast to go back and forth and if you forget something you can race home and anyone that has a quad understands exactly what i mean so that is the third job i have for it so it took a while to build uh, about seven hours in total and um, three days a couple of hours each day and got the job done steel wise a lot of it was scrap metal that came off doors and bits and pieces that was laying around a little steel graveyard if you want to call it and uh, all the steel i had to buy was a bit of angle iron which was very little and the axle and frame underneath itself then of course we had to buy our wheels and hubs and our hitch that was the most expensive part if you want to build it much cheaper than this go and look at anyone that has tractor armors or brakes tractor armors or works on them you can look in marketplace and facebook or somewhere like that i guarantee you'll find a back set of wheels of a mower or stuff and you'll relatively get them for free because people will not want them if it's coming off an old scrap mower so you get that and just put a solid bar straight through and just let it run without any bearings because unless you're going to do a site of work you're not going to really need a wheel with bearings on it just keep it well greased you'd be a hundred percent it's a cheaper option if you wanted to go down that lane without having to buy these because these yeah these do add a bit of expense to it but i think it just makes the thing solid and look that's just the way i did it another thing i possibly would do and i still might do it is take these buys back off again there is a bit of movement there it'd be interesting to see what it's like when it's been sprayed but take these off again step it out to about there be a piece of angle iron instead of this just when i look at it now and it's all together i might still do that and then you come to the job of fitting that or something similar for holding barbed wire what you could do if you use heavy angle iron is you could actually have your angle iron facing in this way so say this is the area here that's holding on your boom your angle iron is coming into here you could bore a hole straight through there the same on the far side if it's good solid angle iron you're using take your boom off run a bar through that hole out to the far side weld a washer on this side so it can go no further pin on the far side and put your barbed wire in the middle just push it through like i was using the handle of an old brush to wind out the barbed wire before more or less the same thing you could get all tasty and all and put a little hole on either side of it uh, where your barbed wire would sit and then just put two clips down to stop it from moving from side to side it's just an idea and it'd be quite easy done as well so that's the thing about building stuff you can build it whatever way you like you can modify it and come back to it and change it if it doesn't suit which i have no doubt i'll probably modify a few things on it as i go along and see what works and what doesn't but anybody could tackle into a job like that and don't be afraid to tackle into it you don't need all the bells and whistles and tools and stuff because 
I built loads of stuff like this when I was younger and all I had was an 8 inch angle grinder which wasn't even a good one, we had it for about 20 years I had an old Clark welder, my second hand, he'd done a swap with an old Stanley Cooker I think with a fella and got that welder and that's all I had and that's what I built my trailers and stuff with and I built a lot of stuff with that so you don't need all the tools and stuff nice to have them when you have them but you don't need them anyway that's it, I'm going to leave it there for now we will come back to another time and we'll pull it through its paces hope you enjoyed today's video, thanks for watching as always see you next one